Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the Dabs of Reality Show. I'm your host, Tom Crawshaw. Today, I wanna to talk about the Game Changers. Did I go vegan after watching the Game Changers? Have you gone vegan after watching the Game Changers? Well, I'm about to tell you my experience in this video and why I think that switching to a whole food, plant-based diet or lifestyle is gonna be the best option for you, for your health, for the planet, and obviously, for the animals. Now, if you're watching this video, you've probably heard about the documentary Game Changers. It's caused quite a stir in the health and fitness community. And hopefully you've already watched the documentary and realized that there is some really valid points in that documentary and that it is actually possible to perform at the highest level eating just plants or eating a predominantly plant-based diet. So is the Game Changers documentary a real game changer? Well, there's been a lot of controversy on this topic, especially from the meat-eating, omnivore, carnivore community. And they're claiming that the science in the documentary was pulled from obscure, small studies. And that really isn't the case. Now, I'm not gonna go into the science and all the debunking stuff in this video. You can check out a bunch of others online. There's a really interesting discussion over on the Joe Rogan podcast because he got Chris Kresser on who has a degree in acupuncture and is supposed to be this nutrition expert. Got Chris Kresser on, Chris Kresser apparently debunked the Game Changers with all this science and what we later found out when Joe got James Wilkes on who is the director and also the, the lead character in the documentary The Game Changers. They got Chris Kresser on, they got James Wilkes on and uh, James proceeded to destroy every single point that Chris Kresser had with uh, legit solid science. Things like B12, things like protein, things like not getting enough nutrients and things on a vegan diet. These myths have been completely shattered. It is possible to live and indeed thrive at the highest level on a vegan or a plant-based diet. Now, what the documentary didn't explicitly say is there is a difference between a vegan diet and a plant-based diet. Now, plant-based means what it says on the tin, that your diet is mainly based on plants. It may leave room for maybe five or 10% of animal products if that's something that you can't quite give up yet or you wanna keep in your diet. Now, a vegan diet is 100% plant-based and most people switch to a vegan diet more from an ethical and environmental perspective than, uh, than the health perspective. Although there is merit in all of these things, which I'm gonna go into in much more detail in just a moment. So did I turn vegan after watching The Game Changers? Well, the truth is I've been living a mainly plant-based lifestyle for the last two years. I had a little bit of meat at Christmas, realized that actually I don't wanna eat it ever again. The only things that kind of slip into my diet here and there, I would say maybe every couple of weeks, is uh, cheese, is dairy. So that's something that I am progressing and working out. I think that the plant-based alternatives are only gonna get better and better. Now, I did a video on why you're gonna be vegan by 2030. So in that video, we go into a report by Rethink X, and they explained the science behind precision fermentation and also the cell-based cultured meats that, uh, that is developing, the technology that's developing right now, and also the plant-based meats that use the precision fermentation technology. So this technology is only gonna improve over time, and I believe within the next couple of years we'll have really cracked the code for plant-based dairy alternatives. Now we do have oat milk, and we do have plant-based cheeses, and they are pretty good, but uh, not quite the real thing just yet, from the cheese perspective anyway. I mean, I could drink oat milk for for the rest of my life, no problems. I have no real need going to, to drink the, uh, the the milk from a from a cow. You know, we're not babies anymore, right? And one of the other striking pieces of information that I came across was a few different documentaries. So we've got Dominion, we've got Forks Over Knives, and we've got Earthlings. Now, if you watch those documentaries and you don't seriously reconsider your position on eating animal products, then, well, I don't really know what to say. You watch these documentaries and you realize that the system is brutal, horrific, and actually today it's completely unnecessary to slaughter animals 
for their meat and for other products. So I'd highly recommend you check those out. Again, I'll put the links to these documentaries in the description, particularly Dominion. I mean, people like to try and say that, oh, that doesn't happen in the UK or that doesn't happen in my country. Um, yes, it does. It happens all over the world. These are industry standards and uh, they don't really get inspected. They don't really get checked. And uh, it's, it's pretty horrific. So I personally think along with many other scientists, many other cardiologists, many other medical doctors that a, a vegan diet is indeed suitable for all stages of life and uh, is indeed suitable for, for high levels of performance and better for the environment, better for the planet, better for the animals as well. So let's talk about why a plant-based lifestyle is good for your health. Well, we now know that most of the major diseases such as heart disease, cancer, diabetes and even Alzheimer's are all linked to poor diet and in particular consumption of animal products. Now the World Health Organization, they made a recommendation to try and get most of your calories, most of your nutrients in your diet from plant-based sources. And a quote from the World Health Organization says that households should select predominantly plant-based diets. It's also the position of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics in the US, which is the largest organization of nutrition professionals in the world, along with many other organizations in Europe and beyond that state that a vegan or a vegetarian diet plant-based is suitable for all stages of life. So that includes pregnancy, that includes babies, children and adults and athletes as well, as long as the diet is adequately planned. So the concept of having an adequately planned plant-based diet is super important here. Now it's totally possible to eat a junk food vegan diet to gain weight and to have adverse health effects and obviously when you're switching to a plant-based diet it's important that you don't just cut out the meat and leave whatever else is on your plate because this then begs the question of you know nutrient deficiency so vegan vegetarian diets you know supplementing with b12 anybody even if you're eating meat you should be supplementing with b12 this is what james wilkes got into on the uh, joe rogan podcast so the scientific consensus right now is that we should all be supplementing with vitamin b12 it's pretty easy to do and you're going to have a higher absorption rate than you would if you were to get it from meat or other sources and at least to me it just seems logical that if you cut down on animal products you cut down on processed foods you cut down on refined sugars you're naturally going to switch to a healthier diet and a healthier lifestyle it's going to improve your biomarkers for inflammation and other related biomarkers that down the line could indicate a certain level of disease and listen, you don't need to go 100% strict vegan to get the health benefits of a plant-based diet. You can still keep some of the animal products. But if you shift your diet to a predominantly plant-based one, it's going to be more healthier for you. And the plant-based foods are actually going to buffer the negative effects of the animal products themselves. So imagine if you were to completely eliminate the animal products, then all the goodness from the plants, all the antioxidants, they're gonna have a much more beneficial effect on the body because they're not buffering and working against the uh, detrimental effects of animal products and animal proteins. So listen, I'm just gonna wrap up this little section on health saying that I'm not a nutrition expert, I'm not a health professional. I've done some research online, I've looked at the studies, I'm gonna to link to the studies that I've referenced in this video in the description below. But I encourage you to go out there and do your own research. Don't take my word as final. There are plenty more experienced and qualified people out there who can give you a, a better, more accurate picture of uh, what's going on in the nutrition space today. But at least from my own research, it's pretty obvious the evidence is there that supports the benefits of switching to a plant-based diet. All right, so let's talk about the planet. As we know, we're in a little bit of an emergency here. Now, whether you believe this whole climate change theory or not, but the truth is we're destroying our ecosystem faster and faster. It's believed that we're now in the sixth extinction event. We've wiped out a whole bunch of species on the planet. I think estimates are around 50% of the species on the planet have been wiped out due to pollution, due to environmental degradation. And this is primarily through industry and 
animal agriculture. Now, I found a report that suggested that 80% of the deforestation, particularly in the Amazon, is related to animal agriculture, to clearing vast, vast acreages of forest for, for grazing and also for the feed. So for the corn, the grain, the soy, that then gets fed to the animals. Now we know that livestock production is the most inefficient way of producing food on this planet right now, specifically beef production. So it's no surprise that 80% of the agricultural land on this planet is dedicated to the rearing of animals and to the crops that the animals will then eat. Just think about what would happen to the planet if we were to reduce our animal consumption if we were to halve it or to slash it down to just 20% of what it is today. Just think of the impact that's gonna have on deforestation. Think of the impact that that's gonna have on our ecosystem. Think of the impact that that's gonna have on restoring natural forests. You know, it's even been suggested that all the land that's been dedicated to rearing animals in the US, if we were to clear the animals off, if we were to let the areas get restored back to their natural habitat, to replant forests, that we could potentially sequester all of the carbon that the US outputs in a single year. Pretty crazy, I know. So listen, we know that animal agriculture takes up a vast majority of the agricultural land on planet Earth right now. We know that the feed takes up about one third of the arable land on earth right now. So it seems logical to me if we reduce our consumption of animal products, we reduce the impact on the environment. And in this video, I'm not really gonna talk about the environmental damage. You know, we've got things like deforestation, ocean acidification, and more specifically, methane, right? So let's talk about methane, let's talk about climate change. So the Food and Agricultural Organization, the FAO, uh, which is a UN organization, they estimated emissions from the animal agriculture sector was at 14.5%. Now, more accurate and correct estimates have suggested 51%, and that was done by Goodland and Anhang, so I'm gonna link that report below as well. But there is also a new white paper out that has looked deeper into the numbers that were used in these calculations and the studies and the surveys that were done. And this report specifically looked at methane. So you can find this report linked in the description. It's climatehealers.org if you wanna go and check that out. So they actually looked at methane and they looked at the numbers and they calculated that animal agriculture, the emissions from that sector when you adjust for methane, for the heating effect and for how long it stays in the atmosphere, we actually get a percentage of 81% of global emissions contributed by animal agriculture. And the main culprit here is methane. Now I'm not gonna go into why methane has been underestimated. It's due to the heating effect and how long it sticks around in the atmosphere. Now the numbers that were created by the FAO, they actually took a 100 year snapshot of methane. When in actual fact, methane only lasts for 10 years in the atmosphere and then gets converted to carbon dioxide. So if you wanna go into the specifics of methane and why it was underestimated, you can go and check out that report. I'm gonna link it in the description. So ultimately the real point that I'm trying to make here is that we all live in an ecosystem, this biosphere, this place that is conductive to life. If we destroy our ecosystem and we ruin our biosphere, we're actually destroying ourselves. You know, we depend on this biosphere and this ecosystem, this symbiosis of nature. And when we disrupt this through animal agriculture and all the effects that that produces from the runoff to the methane, we're actually massively damaging our environment. And here's the thing, we've only got one planet Earth and if we do so much damage and we let that continue, it spirals out of control and we get to a situation where can we even recover from this? And this is where we're at right now. This is what the science is showing us, that we're at this sort of crossroads. If we continue along the trajectory that we're going on right now, then we may certainly face a uh, ex possible extinction event of humans, right? And I'm not over-exaggerating here, because for example, if all the fish gets fished out of the sea, 
What do you think is going to happen? That whole ocean ecosystem is going to collapse. That has a massive knock-on effect of what happens on land. We take the bees for example, if the bees go our food production gets slashed to probably around 10 or 20 percent. So there's lots of issues here, I don't have time to go into all the specifics but just know that animal agriculture is playing the biggest part in the destruction of our ecosystem, the destruction of our environment and our biosphere in a general sense. So last but not least, let's talk about the animals. These are the real victims here. Animals are conscious, animals feel emotions and they want to live a good life. They have families, they have children and they express emotions in this intimate complex relationship that we don't fully understand as humans and in fact we take advantage of this and I often find it quite funny that the argument against veganism of reducing your animal consumption is the fact that you actually kill more animals if you're vegan because of the mice that get killed in the field and the flies and the grasshoppers and all this stuff but the actual fact is billions and billions of animals get slaughtered every single year that's not including the fish many many billions more fish get killed as well every single year. So honestly in a society today where it's not actually necessary to consume any animal products we're not doing this out of pure survival. Now if you put me on a desert island and all there was was bison for example I mean they wouldn't exist on a desert island but let's say if they did and I had no food, no plants, nothing around me and I had to kill an animal to survive. Sure I would. That's what we used to do as hunter-gatherers, right? So as hunter-gatherers we would forage, we would collect food from plants, fruits from trees and so on and so forth. We would rarely go out and hunt down lots of animals. In fact, research now suggests that we were more like scavengers, at least in those earlier days we wouldn't really have the the manpower to to hunt down. In fact it was obviously easy for us to go and find an animal that had already been killed and scavenger from uh, from the remains with the rest of the diet being predominantly plant-based. In fact you know we also did a lot of fasting, a lot of intermittent fasting which I'm going to get into in more depth in a video of the future. So listen, I'm going to put some links in the description for a couple of documentaries. We've got Dominion, we've got Earthlings, we've got Forks Over Knives. These are all hard-hitting, quite emotionally disturbing videos. If you look at what actually happens in a commercial large-scale factory farm, this is where 99% of the meat that you buy comes from and it's produced in honestly horrific conditions when you look at the slaughterhouses it's absolutely barbaric what happens and whether your cow is grass-fed and your pig is massaged with lavender oil and you know all this crazy stuff it doesn't matter how the animal was treated because ultimately they're still going to get their throat slit and they're going to get their body parts packaged up for, for you to eat. I'm not a massive fan of that as you can tell I don't ever foresee myself eating animals ever again. I will soon come off the dairy and the cheese. My intention is to completely reduce the cheese, the occasional cheese intake. But I'm doing the best I can right now and I think that you owe it to yourself and to the planet and to our collective to reduce your meat consumption. Take a long hard look at these documentaries. Have a word with yourself in the mirror and ask yourself do I want to partake in this industry? It's a question I asked myself. The question was a resounding no and uh, I hope it is for you as well. So listen this is not meant to be some kind of like activist video or anything I'm simply presenting a case for why switching to a plant-based diet is good for your health, it's good for the planet and it's good for the animals. Now I would be extremely surprised if you could come up with an argument that could refute those claims because to me it seems like simple logic. Anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video guys let me know in the comments are you vegan are you vegetarian are you trying out this plant-based diet for the first time after watching the game changers I would love to know. Until next time guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. 
Thank you so much for watching this video today. I know your time is extremely valuable. So if you've enjoyed today's content, please consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell so you get a notification next time I release another one of these videos. You can also leave me a comment below and let me know what part of this video resonated the most with you or simply click that like button to let me know you enjoyed this content. And if you want to get your hands on a free 12 minute guided meditation that I recorded to help you manifest your dreams and create whatever you want in your life, go ahead and click the link in the description for your free download. And if you want to check out all the latest blog posts on my blog, dabsofreality.com, the link is down there below as well, along with my Instagram and my Facebook page if you want to consider following me on those platforms. Until next time, catch you on the flip side.